Have you ever had what you thought was a good idea for a movie? There's this job. While making that million dollar box office hit can take a great deal of effort, but what's tougher is getting from the production stage of your dream to the actual creation of a film. A pet project can face incredible hurdles that keep them from being completed. This script stinks! I wouldn't wrap fish in this thing! And even if the film is finished, it might not get distributed. That's what I think of that stuff up there, Fritz. Here are three examples of movies that have been produced and abandoned. Great ideas that have not been released officially, but deserve to have an audience see the finished work. Number one, Bug Jack Baron. The title Bug Jack Baron does not refer to an insect. Instead, it's a catchphrase for Jack Baron, a popular talk show host who asks his audience if anything bothers them, and if so, bug him and he'll do the rest. I'm here to lead you by the hand through the dark forest of your own hatred and anger and humiliation. Norman Spinrad's science fiction novel centers around the charismatic Baron exploiting the needs, worries, and gripes of his audience for greater power. When he learns that a super-rich cryonics foundation is offering immortality to white patrons and ignoring African Americans, Baron seeks to make things right. He soon talked into running for president of the United States, thereby risking the country's future with his cultic personality. Bug Jack Barron has resonated with readers over the years. It received mixed reviews but was nominated for a Hugo Award, and in 1983, Costa Gavras, the Oscar winning director of such films as Z. Missing. In any way, you can tie my hands, you can blindfold me. I just want my boy back. And State of Siege was slated to direct a film version using Harlan Ellison's adapted screenplay, which he entitled None of the Above. There's been speculation over why the movie was never made. One possibility brought up by Spinrad and expressed by Harlan Ellison before the latter died in 2018 was that the studio posted Bug Jack Barron as in production simply as a money-making tax write-off. The thing of it is that in those days, the Writers Guild contract did not protect you against the studio owning the rights forever if they didn't make the movie. A thing called turnaround means that if they don't make the movie, they lose some kind of tax benefit. So they want $5 million, $6 million to get back some of the movie they pissed away on blown scripts and blown salaries before they'll let anybody else make the film. Still, Bug Jet Baron is a great idea either as a YouTube series warning against cult figures or even better as a version made for the big screen. The interesting thing about it is that with some technological and political updates, it's even more relevant now than it was when it was written. Number two, Swirly. How would you like to be made out of ice cream? You don't know. Swirly is the story of Softy, who's been soft served a bad hand in life. He's made of ice cream, which might delight kids, but proves itself quite the detriment. He has to live in constant air conditioning no matter what the climate, it's 40 degrees outside, and we got the air conditioners on. Has no love life to speak of, and lives each day getting high off Bosco chocolate syrup. Bosco drinks his Bosco. Bosco drinks his Bosco. It's not an easy life. What's worse are the increased conflicts with his roommate, played by NYPD Blue actor David Caruso, and his submission to an organized crime boss with the delicious name of Don Tofuti. You're dripping all over my fucking table. Look at you. You know what I got to do? I got to give you a terrible licking. <laughs> I got to give him a terrible... Actor James Lawrence, best known for Frankenhooker and his hilarious turn in Street Trash. On the dawn of douchebags, that's what you are. Hey, kid, I'll tell you some Nick. Nick the dick. That's what they call you behind your back, hey, kid, you know. Used his earnings from a sitcom to fund the short film Swirly. You know, there's something so romantic about the sea. <laughs> As a pitch for a feature, it's quite effective as a comedy and a compelling drama. Lawrence rejected the offers to make Swirly as a kid-centered comedy, opting instead for a bold approach. 
understanding the comedy, but eventually taking the caked coned protagonist seriously. With the ever-present threat of climate change on all of us, Softy's fight for survival and his struggle for respect is one I think we could all identify with. Swirly has screamed at comic cons and festivals, but hasn't been picked up by any major studios for an expanded feature. As with David Caruso's acting career, the short film has been the butt of jokes by self-ingratiating infotainment shows. However, if a whacked out movie like Swiss Army Man can be created by filmmakers who eventually won Oscars for direction, there's no reason why an engaging feature can't be made about a frozen confection seeking affection. Try me. I'm delicious. Number 3. The Thief and the Cobbler by Richard Williams. Of the three films chosen for this episode, this one has the best potential. In production for over 30 years, The Thief and the Cobbler was designed by the Greek Canadian animator Richard Williams, whose perfectionism tragically may have contributed to this film's ultimate dismissal by major studios. Basically, it's the story of Tack, a cobbler in an Arabian based golden city where three golden balls atop a minaret keep the citizens safe from harm. A prophecy decreed that the city would be threatened if the golden balls were removed, but could be saved by the simplest person using the simplest tool. Tack, in his struggle with a thief, accidentally insults Zigzag, the Grand Vizier of the Sultan King Nod, and is threatened with execution. However, King Nod's daughter, Princess Yum Yum, saves the cobbler, and they eventually fall in love irritating Zigzag, who has his mind set on marrying the princess. I won't go into many details about the long, struggling production of The Thief and the Cobbler. There are other videos that talk about how two inferior versions were created, and how Disney may have stolen the animator's idea for Aladdin. What I do want to bring up is that Richard Williams' version of this film is practically completed. His version shows an astonishing artistry with a combination of optical illusion, abstract animation, and a wildly comic style similar to that of George Dunning's Yellow Submarine. This is definitely an engaging, savory, and trippy experience worthy of serious animation lovers. Most of Williams' work is completed and can be seen on YouTube with the unfinished storyboard pieces interspersed along with the completed narrative. It's been 10 years since the recobbled cut version, headed by Garrett Gildcrist, was archived by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. It's time to finish the project with the best animators available and finally release it to the big screen where it belongs. There you have it, three great films that should be released for viewers to enjoy. Do you agree or disagree? Do you know of other unfinished films you feel should be completed or released? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Mediatrocities. Please like and subscribe and share this video with other media lovers. You can help fund future episodes of Mediatrocities through Buy Me A Coffee or through PayPal. Links for both are in the description below. Now that you know about three films that should be completed and released, Watch this video about the world's worst singer who became a rock and roll icon. See you soon!